Let us understand the role of government spending and its impact on an economy. To understand the role of government spending and its impact on an economy, uh, we have to first understand from where does the government earn its money and how does the government spend its money. There are two main sources for the government to earn its money. The first and the biggest source are taxes. The government taxes a lot of things, such as income of individuals via income tax, profits of corporations via corporation tax, and host of several indirect taxes like sales tax and service tax. These taxes together contribute the biggest source of income for a government. The second source of income for the government are non-tax revenues. Non-tax revenues are income where the gov which the government makes from its public sector undertakings. So for example, in India, the Indian government uh, owns the Indian Railways. So any profits made by the Indian Railways is a source of revenue for the government. Similarly, the government is, a sh our share is shareholder in several public sector banks. When these public sector banks make profits and pay dividends, that is also a source of revenue for the government, but this is non-tax. With these two main sources of income from the government, let us understand where does the government spend its money. The expenditure of the government can be classified into two categories, revenue expenditure and capital expenditure. Revenue expenditure is the expenditure which the government has to incur for its functioning. So for example, paying of salaries of government employees, uh, 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 allocation of money to several ministries. So all these are part of the expenditure which the government has to incur for its smooth functioning. There is the other sort of expenditure which is the capital expenditure. Capital expenditure is a bit different because this leads to formations of asset in the economy. So when the government spends money to build roads, bridges, rail lines, hospitals or schools, this can be seen as capital expenditure because this is leading to asset formation in the country. So now that we have seen the two main sources of income for the government and the two main sources of expenditure for the government, we need to understand what is a deficit. Now it so happens that in certain years, in some years, the government spends more money than it earns. When the government spends more money than it earns, then the question is from where does the government get that extra money? So hypothetically speaking, if the government earns 100 from taxes and spends 150, from where does the government get that 50? And the answer is that the government essentially borrows that money. It, bo it can borrow the money from the central bank, that is a reserve in, in, in India, they can, the government of India can borrow from the Reserve Bank of India, or they can borrow directly from the market. Now, when the government spends more than it earns, when the total expenditure, the revenue expenditure and the capital expenditure is more than what the government earns, the government is known to be running a deficit. Now, fiscal deficit, if kept under a certain, uh, is kept, if kept under a check, is not necessarily a bad thing. Because if the government is mostly spending money in capital expenditures, even though it is running a deficit, the government is leading, is, is, is playing the role of creating assets in the economy. These assets in the economy will give returns in the long run. So even though the government is running a deficit and is borrowing money, if it is spending most of its money in capital expenditures, in asset formations, these assets are likely to bear fruit in the near uh, or the middle, f or in, in the medium future, medium term future. However, if the fiscal deficit is not kept under check and the, if the government spends way too much money than what it earns, then things can get a bit problematic. Let us understand what problems can a government face or what problems can an economy face because of a very high fiscal deficit. 
The problems that an economy faces are high inflation, higher interest rates, and in some cases higher taxes because of high fiscal deficit. Let us understand each of them one by one. When the government borrows money, let's, let's talk about high inflation first. When the government borrows money, if the go government borrows money from the central bank, then the central bank has to print new money to lend it to the government. If the central bank prints new money and lends it to the government, this increases the total money supply in the economy and the goods and services remaining constant, increase in money supply will cause an increase in prices. So this leads to higher inflation. Secondly, because the government is spending a lot of money, this increases aggregate demand in the economy. If for some reason the supply cannot increase to match up to that aggregate demand, then the prices will increase. There could be certain factors which might be inhibiting the economy from increasing its supply because of certain constraints on the factors of production. In such a scenario, if the government is spending a lot of money, it is increasing the aggregate demand. If the government is increasing the aggregate demand and supply not being able to match up will lead to an increase in prices and hence high inflation. Let us take the case of high interest rates. How does fiscal deficit cause higher interest rates? If the government of India does not borrow from the central bank but borrows from the market directly, which is generally the case in India. When the government of India runs a deficit, they generally borrow from the market by issuing government of India bonds. When the government issues bonds in the market, they are acting as a source of investment for many investors out there. When investors see government issuing bonds, some of the investors might be willing to invest in the Government of India bonds. Hence the Government of India is issuing financial securities which is competing against the other sources of investments that are there in the economy. The fixed deposits, the post office savings or the deposits by, by banks. So all these other sources of investments have found a new competitor when the government enters the market and tries starts selling its bonds. So for these other sources of investments to keep their customers with themselves, they have to pay a higher interest rates. When the institutes, when the financial institutions and the financial industry has to pay higher interest rates when they raise their interest rates, that causes the cost of capital to increase in the economy. If the cost of capital starts increasing a lot in the economy, that can be problematic for economic growth because cheap capital is something that is necessary. If capital becomes expensive, that will hinder investments because people might not be, investors might not be willing to borrow money and hence uh, investment opportunities will become scarce uh, because capital has become expensive and only those investment opportunities which are providing which are promising a very high return uh, investors will only be willing to borrow money to finance a very profitable investment opportunities and if that is the case the economic growth in the country takes a hit so that's th this is how we saw where fiscal deficit uh, causes high interest rates which can in certain cases have detrimental effect on the economy in some cases, in certain dire situations when the government is running a very high fiscal deficit, then the government might be forced to increase their taxes to increase their income. If so the government is forced to increase the taxes on their citizens uh, or, or on the economy uh, to increase its income. An increase in taxes can have several cascading effects. Uh, it can affect consumption levels, it can affect investment decisions, and hence that can also in some cases have detrimental effects on the economy. So we see that this fiscal deficit figure is very important uh, because very high fiscal deficits has detrimental effects on the economy. India as a country has always had a fiscal deficit. In certain years our fiscal deficits becomes uncomfortably high and hence the government then starts taking measures to bring down their fiscal deficit.
What is the role of government in economy? In an economy, the government plays a very critical and crucial role. The first of them is that the government, it is the, it is the, the onus of the government to provide a well-functioning legal and political system. A, economy, a, a government or a society which is experiencing political turmoil, uh, a violent political turmoil, is not conducive for economic growth because there is very little trust in the system, uh, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty and people are unwilling to invest. Hence governments need to make sure that the country has a stable political environment which is very important for the confidence level required for people to invest and increase the economic activity in a country. What is also necessary is that a government provide a good legal framework because when people uh, invest or enter into contracts with each other there are bound to be cases where certain counterparties renege on their promises on the on the uh, uh, on the terms and conditions of the contract therefore contract enforcement becomes very critical in a developed economic world it is also the onus of the government to provide such a contract enforcement mechanism via the legal framework so this providing a well-functioning legal and political system is very important. Uh, is a very important role the government plays in the up in the uh, uh, advancement of an economy. Secondly, the government plays the the other crucial role of being the sole being the regulator uh, and to provide a competitive marketplace. Markets are not completely free as some free marketeer philosophers, uh, 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 free marketeer th thinkers would like it to be. There needs to be certain checks and balances put in place. There needs to be a certain amount of regulation to ensure that uh, the, the economy or the society does not drift, drift towards monopolistic situations. Hence there needs to be a proper regulatory framework as well. Regulation uh, in, in certain sectors like te the telecom or insurance are a few examples that we have in our country, India. The, the government also needs to think about policies when it comes to trade with foreign countries, national economic policies. The government also uh, uh, decides on uh, uh, the, the regulation to put in on the natural resources available in a particular country. Hence, the regulatory role is also critical in case uh, is, is a, the, the regulatory role is also critical when it comes to the economic environment in a particular country. The government regulates the marketplace and tries to ensure a healthy competitive marketplace for the goods and services that are transacted in a country. In certain cases, uh, this, in certain cases, it is important that the, gov the government uh, stimulate the economy by increasing spending. This, is, this was one of the philosophies which was put forward by the renowned economist John Maynard Keynes, where he saw that the, government role, the government's role becomes very critical in case of uh, situations where the economy is in recession or is, is, or is suffering from, from a, from a depression-like scenario. In this case, he argued that the governments should increase their spending to pick up the economic activity in a particular country. The government also has the onus of trying to keep income inequality in check. High dis great disparity in income equality, in, in income levels within a particular society can lead to certain amount of a certain amount of unrest. If there's a large population which has very little resources or very little wealth and there's a, there's a very small minor population which has huge amounts of wealth and resources, that can lead to certain political instability. That, and that is also not conducive for future economic growth because uh, uh, the huge inequalities create some disbalances 
in the goods market and the capital markets as well. Hence, the government needs to provide uh, schemes and policies via taxes or via some social spending whereby they keep this inequality in check. These are the key, key roles that the government plays in an economy. We are going to look into, in later videos, we are going to look into how does the government uh, finance some of its spendings and where does the government earn its money and how does it spend its money.